She's PhD student of Community and Behavioral Health from Colorado School of Public Health. Kun Jun, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is quite early morning for you. Today, do you have to go out and join all the medical personnel to fight COVID-19? So I am actually more on the public health side. So I'm working to increase access to testing um, in many countries around the world. And I'm also doing what I can to support our medical staff um, in um, the response to the community and also communication with the public. And then how the yes. testing uh, progressing? Is it doing offering any, any hope? Uh, Things are progressing. Um, we won't know yet if the measures that we have established as a community will, um, how that will impact the number of cases. However, there has been a rise in uh, anti-Asian American sentiment um, in the past couple of weeks. Yes. What, what did you encounter in terms of fear or hatred against Asian Americans? Yeah, I have heard a lot from my um, community members and friends. Uh, myself, I have experienced it directly, whether it's going to the grocery store and having the, um, the cashier using an extra amount of hand sanitizer before and after interacting with me compared to with other customers or having people not want to sit next to me on the plane just because um, of how I look. And even um, a friend's relative calling in Orient, which is a racist term. So the rise in the discrimination against the Asian Americans has to do with the COVID-19, right? Yes, and I think a lot of those fears um, and misconceptions about Asians and Asian Americans maybe already existed, but are amplified during this time when people are afraid and are feeling panic. And how, how do we how do you react to the situation that you encounter that you just mentioned? Yeah, um, it's hard to know because it's really hurtful to experience. And um, when I feel safe to do so, I, I tell them that it's really hurtful and that, you know, just because I am of Asian descent doesn't mean that I'm at higher risk for um, becoming infected or anything like that. But at times, all I can really muster is to just not cry. Yes, and do you try to communicate back to people who show gesture of discrimination? What do you like to tell them? Yeah, I think that with outbreaks, it's really difficult to, to manage um, on a community level and it's impossible to contain if you leave it only up to individuals. So, we, there's really no room for fear or for discrimination when it comes to response to COVID. And we really need to work together and, and be kind to one another. And I think that that is really important um, because we have to spread facts and there's a lot of misinformation out there. And it's important that we know that um, what the facts are and how we can help each other because there's no other way to combat it. The President Donald Trump's description of uh, the coronavirus as the Chinese virus, do you think it has the, something to to worsen the, the situation as far as the discrimination against Asian Americans concerned? Definitely. Um, his continued use of the term Chinese virus it has been especially harmful because there are so many um, negative connotations and they feel like it incites a lot of um, a lot of hatred and fear in people and perhaps encourages them to even be more physically violent to those of Asian descent. Um, here in Colorado, we have a significant portion of um, elderly uh, Asian and Asian Americans and you know that age group is particularly at risk for severe disease from COVID and it's there's a lot of fear in the community right now. Yeah. Under this current situation against Asian faces, does it hold you back from participating in the virus in helping the community? Um, it does not. Yeah, this is what I've studied and trained for. Uh, 
specifically for infectious disease prevention and control. Um, however, it does affect me um, and my mental health because I am American, I'm Asian American, Thai American, and so I would like to feel accepted and understood as well um, as a public health professional, but it won't stop me from helping. Um, I do feel like it's my responsibility to help spread awareness, though. So. The, the place where you are living in now, is it under any kind of a lockdown or any under any kind of restrictions of movement? Yeah, there has been um, various stay-at-home orders, um, depending on the city and county that you live in. Statewide, there's um, a huge push for social distancing and for people to stay at home except for non-essential, except for essential uh, business. So there isn't any um, enforcement, um, but it's just really relying on the best of everyone working together. And how do yourself and your family conduct yourself in, uh, in the past one week? Sorry, could you please repeat that? How, how, how do yourself or your family and, uh, go about um, in your daily life in the past one week? Yeah, I think that we have to go around much more careful than we were before because we're really not sure what someone may be thinking towards us um, just because of how we look. For me, um, I am now going to school from from home, working from home, and just trying my best to um, not go outside for, mm -hmm. for anything except for the grocery store once a week. Um, my sister works in the essential sector, so she has to go and deliver mail every day, and she's at risk as well. So right now you comply with the request by the government to work from home, stay at home as well, to solve the situation of discrimination, but you still carry on working. Yes. 